Heritage Sports, I'm going to admit something to you all. I'm a little bit biased. And not biased for the reason why you may think, yes, I like Coach Prime. Yes, I love uh, his, his business acumen and his moves. And he's gone to the University of Colorado. But I'm biased because on December 7th, 2022, he named my former defensive coordinator, Charles Kelly, his defense coordinator for the Colorado Buffaloes. This video, I'm going to tell you about him as a man, what I remember, the stories, which are which are funny, and just the kind of person he is. I'm going to go over his strengths and his weaknesses, which are very few. I mean, I, I love this coach to life. He's one of my favorite coaches I've ever had. A little bit about my background. I'm a former college football player. I did not play in the NFL, but I uh, played in college, and he ended up being my defensive coordinator for a few seasons. And I, I've taken his insight and and the things that he would talk about and continue to to use throughout my life. So he that's the reason why I'm biased. As soon as he hired him, I was like, okay, let's go. Let's go, Colorado. I'm all in. You know, we coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I, I love the move before, but once he announced that, I was completely in. A little bit about Charles Kelly. He is a wonderful recruiter. If some recruiting boards have him number one, a lot of recruiting boards have him in the top 10. He just came from the University of Alabama as the defensive analyst, doing really, really good work there. And we followed his career. Me and my teammates have followed his career um, since leaving, um, uh, since I left college, since I graduated college. I was a, a linebacker, but he has a specialty in DBs. All right. So, and it, Emphasis on DBs. And just to give you a little bit of background, Charles Kelly played at Auburn for four years in the uh, late 80s. And then he started his trajectory. He he was at a high school, but he went back to Auburn as a grad assistant. Then he went to Jacksonville State for a few seasons. He then was the defensive coordinator at Henderson State, which is in uh, Arkansas. Jacksonville State is in Alabama, I believe. Um so he went from Alabama to Arkansas, and then he was at the Nickel State University for uh, a few seasons as a DB coach, then defense coordinator. Then his career just just exploded. I like, get bigger programs. He then went to Georgia Tech as the special teams coach. Ended up being a cornerbacks coach, defensive back coach, and an interim defensive coordinator. From there, he joined the uh, staff. At Florida State, but Jimbo Fisher, their national championship teams, he ended up being a defense coordinator there for a, a few years. He, he, the last time I talked to uh, Coach Kelly was him trying to recruit my my uh, my cousin uh, to Florida State, but he was he was already said he didn't go to Florida State, but that's another story. And then uh, he ended up going to University of Tennessee as a special teams coordinator, then at Alabama for the last three years as a defensive analyst, defensive coach, and then now he's been named the defensive coordinator at Colorado. It's going to be interesting seeing him. I don't it, Just knowing what I remember of him, he's not really a camera guy, so it's going to be interesting to see how, how he shows up on camera. He's, he's going to be authentic. He's going to be himself. There's no doubt about that, but he's never been one for um, uh, – it, it's just a different time when I played college. There, there weren't cameras all around. There wasn't people, you know, recording content all the time. They they recorded content at the game, or sometimes they recorded content for practice, but not all around. So it's going to be interesting to see how how that goes. But one of the reasons why he's one of the better recruiters is because he's down to earth. He's he's always been relatable. He he will take tell you like it is and make sure everyone's accountable. The people on our team, some. Um, Kids ended up going to the NFL. One particular person got drafted, and you know it didn't matter. He held them accountable. He's, if you're not doing what you need to be doing, he's going to say so himself. The place, the person I'm thinking about, the cornerback that got drafted. Sometimes he wouldn't have his heart in tackling, and I remember just clear as day, he's saying, "Look, you're going to have to tackle. That that's that's what we're doing here. We cannot have." One person tackling and one person not, so he he'll hold the 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 whole room, whole defensive room, uh, accountable. Now, uh, he told great stories, great down 
like life stories and stories I've taken with me throughout my life. Now, those I won't share because that was in the locker room, but I'll, I'll share a quick story. He's an even kill guy, but he can be intense. This is a great story. So we were down at halftime to a team we should not have been down to. And the way the locker room is set up, the he was in the booth. So the the team went in there. There was, you know, a divider in the locker room, offense on this side, defense on that side. And, you know, the offensive coordinator is already there. He's talking. And we're waiting on Coach Kelly to come down. So it, about, it was about a two-minute delay. So we're, we're in our, our defensive, you know, side of the locker room. As soon as that door cracked, he yelled. When, I, when I'm telling you, he yelled from the time he walked in to the time he walked out. Because he knew we, we shouldn't have been playing like that. We gave up like three touchdowns. He knew we should have been playing at a higher pace, a higher clip. But, I mean, it's, it's just, I'll never forget that it was jarring. As soon as the door cracked, he started yelling. And he didn't stop yelling until he left the door. He's like, y'all need to come out there. And if y'all don't want to come out there, y'all can stay out there. I'm going back out there right now. And then exited. There was no game planning. There was no no X's and O's. There was no analysis. It was him yelling, you need to be better. And, I mean, that that was a story I'll never forget. We ended up winning that game. But it it was just indicative of he knows what buttons to push and how – to be strategic when explaining to a large group of people. You know, we were at a home game at this particular point, so it was way more people he was talking to. This wasn't the travel squad. And he laid into us, and we knew we had to be more accountable and do our assignments. And, you know, it was still a shootout, but we, we ended up winning that game. Uh, let me see. What else can I tell you about Charles Kelly, Coach Kelly? The other thing I was going to say, this is the farthest west he's ever been. You know, we've gone over the the places where he's coached. He's, he's a southerner. I mean, he's from what I remember, I, I believe he's from Alabama. But, you know, he's he's been in Georgia, you know, Florida, um, Tennessee, and Alabama, I mean, and Louisiana. I believe this in Arkansas. This is, I think this is the farthest west he's ever been, like ever lived. So... Uh, I know how I would be as a Southerner going out there in the snow. I know they keep saying it's not that cold, but I'll be like, man, look, why is there snow on the ground? But uh, I'm sure he can excel in, in all of those things. So his strengths, again, are he is not afraid to coach in the moment. He's coached in the SEC. He's coached in uh, you know Georgia Tech and the ACC, and he's coached. Uh, at Florida State, when they won the national championship, he knows one. He knows what a national championship team looks like, and what a national championship defense needs to look like, and how hungry they need to be. That's one thing I remember him saying: "You need to be hungry. You need, as a defense, you need to want to to stop the offense from doing what they need to do." So you're going to get that kind of a coach. He's not afraid to coach in the moment. And big critical moments, he will believe in his guys. And that, to me, is his only, I would say, his only critique. So we ended up playing a big game against Indiana. We lost the game 35-31. Our best, the best receiver we saw the whole year in Indiana, his name was Justin Hardy. Justin Hardy went on to play in the NFL for a few years. I believe he played for the Buffalo Bills and another organization. But my point is, he was the best receiver we saw all year, bar none. He was unbelievable. I had to look the game up. He ended up with eight receptions, 122 yards, and one touchdown. And that touchdown was the difference in the game. We the, Indiana won the game 35-31, all right? So our, our best cornerback did not travel. Like, that was our our game plan going in that he wanted everybody to be up for the task. And he really believed in the second cornerback that we had. So the, our best cornerback wasn't traveling with Justin Hardy at all. So when the game got really close, it was like a game of matchups. If you remember the Rams versus the Bengals and how they picked on Eli Apple with Cooper cup, it was like that. So it came down to a goal line play basically. And our best cornerback did not travel with Justin Hardy. And, he he 
I remember him saying, no, he's, he's going to make a play. Watch, he's going to make a play. He believed him, in him and allowed him, our, our second best cornerback, to have that moment. So it was a one-on-one -on -one with Justin Hardy. It was a fade in the end zone, and Justin just made that play. That was the touchdown that, that um, to me, sealed the game. And that, and we lost the game 35-31. My, my biggest thing from that is not only having the confidence – that meant the world to the cornerback that got beat. I will say that. That meant the world to him. He was not an NFL corner. The other one was. And he probably could have played in the CFL, but that wasn't the case. He he ended up you know going into coaching. But he would always say that moment let him um, go against the best and do the best that he could. But for the on the on the grander scheme, that really sucked for us because we really wanted to win that game, and we thought we could win that game, and we played our butts off to to win that game. But you know that that that's a part of the gig. You know we we he wanted to challenge, and he believed wherever people lined up, we were just going to play them, and that's the kind of confidence you have in in your group. But going over your strengths is not only the belief. But being relatable, knowing how to talk to, you know, scores of people, a lot of people at one time and be able to communicate a great message, have individual connections. And to me, knowing that the moment's not going to be too big, he's going to coach one way. And he was unshaken or unmoved when when the story I just told happens. He's like, we put our, our best foot forward and, and we got to live with that. He's one of those type of coaches and some you admire. So I think this was an, an out-of-the-park hire, and I really, really am rooting for the Buffaloes this year. Even though I'm, I have to be realistic, I think this was a, a, a fantastic hire, and, re, and realistically they got a crazy schedule. He's going to be able to show his coaching, have a full display of his coaching because the Pac-12 offenses – are are high powered. He's going to be able to put his coaching skills on display when they play, you know, the Oregon's and the USC's and the Utah's, especially playing in Utah. He's going to see how his his defense can measure up. Now they're getting some dogs, but those dogs who are hungry are going to have to be able to to step up. And I know he's going to believe in them. So either way, I wanted to share this story uh, of, of my personal uh, connection with uh, the University of Colorado and give you some more insight on myself on why I love football so much. And anytime I talk about draft prospects, you know, I do have some kind of credibility. So either way, I'll uh, talk to y'all next time. I may talk about the the time I used to be a NFL sports agent as well, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, till next time, Heritage Sports.